Hello, this is Elizabeth, and I'm dropping by with a short but sweet story by Hans Christian Andersen. It explains what it is that grasshoppers sing about, and it's about three animals who took part in a contest. It's called the leapfrog. A flea, a grasshopper, and a leapfrog once wanted to see who could jump highest, and they invited the whole world, and everybody else besides, to come to see their jumping festival. The judge was to be the king himself, no less. I will give my daughter's hand in marriage to him who jumps highest, exclaimed the king. For a competition without a prize would not be so amusing. After the king's announcement, the three jumpers were more keen than ever to make the right sort of impression on the world, and each wished to show that he was the fit and proper one to marry the princess. The flea was the first to step forward. He had exquisite manners. And bowed to the company on all sides, for he had noble blood. He was, moreover, accustomed to live close to human beings, and that makes a great difference. Then came the grasshopper. He was considerably heavier, but he was well mannered, and wore a green uniform which he had by right of birth. He said, moreover. That he belonged to a very ancient Egyptian family. The fact was, he had just been brought out of the fields and put in a cardboard box. I sing so well, he said, that sixteen native grasshoppers grew thin from sheer envy when they heard me. And that is how the flea. And the grasshopper introduced themselves, and thought that they were quite good enough to marry a princess. The leapfrog said nothing, but because he said nothing, people thought he was all the cleverer. And when the house dog snuffed at him with his nose, he decided the leapfrog was of good family. The king's old counselor. Asserted that the leapfrog was a prophet, for when the weather was about to turn warmer, his skin would turn a brighter colour. As to which of these three fine specimens is the most fitting to marry my daughter, I say nothing," exclaimed the king. "But I have my own opinion, none the less." It was time for the contest to begin. The flea jumped so high that nobody could see where he went to, so they all said he had not jumped at all, and that he had cheated. The grasshopper jumped only half as high, but he leaped into the king's face, and that was ill-mannered. The leapfrog. Stood still for a long time, lost in thought. People began to think that he would not jump at all. I only hope he is not unwell," said the house dog. When, pop! He made a jump into the lap of the princess, who was sitting on a little golden stool close by. At this, the king said. There is nothing above my daughter, therefore, nobody should jump higher than her. But for this, one must possess understanding, and the leapfrog has shown that he has understanding. He is brave, and intellectual. And by the decision of the king, the leapfrog won the princess. The other contestants tried not to show their disappointment, though in truth they both felt it keenly. 
It's all the same to me, said the flea. The princess may have the old leapfrog for all I care. I jumped the highest, but in this world merit seldom meets its reward. Looks is what people appreciate nowadays. The flea then went to serve abroad in the army, where, it is said, he was killed. The grasshopper sat on a green bank and reflected on worldly things, and he said too, Yes, looks are everything. A fine appearance is what the people care about. And then he began chirping his peculiar melancholy song, from which we have taken this story, and which may, very possibly, be all untrue. And that was the story of The Leapfrog by Hans Christian Andersen. I do hope that you enjoyed it. And Bertie says that it only goes to show that frogs truly do make good matches for princesses. And don't forget, there are loads more stories at storynori.com. I'll be back with another one soon. For now, from me, Elizabeth, goodbye. <laughs>